G'day guys, Ron here from Osborne Digital Marketing. Today, I'm going to show you how to get content from the Wayback Machine. Now, this is a fantastic method. If, let's say, you had an old website and you want to grab that content again to repurpose it for your own website, or it's a great way of grabbing content for your website from other sources. So let me show you a possible method that could be used. I'm not suggesting that you use this method. I'm saying it's a possible method that some people out there do. So let me educate on how you can go out there and make sure that other people aren't using content from expired domains and grabbing the content from the Wayback Machine to repurpose it. All right. So the first thing that you're gonna to want to do if you do wanna check this, and this is how it's done. So this is a method that does get used by people. So the first thing that they do is they go into expired domains. So you just wanna go into your expired domains and what they'll generally do is they'll look for a keyword. So as an example, let's just say uh, the old faithful plumber, all right? So if you were looking to get content from the Wayback Machine, and you were looking, you are in the plumbing niche, you wanted to get content from a good website, what would you do? Well, enter your keyword, and then what they do, of course, this is what the unscrupulous people do, absolutely. So this is what happens. They'll come in here, they'll look for a powerful domain, a powerful website, something that's expired. And then as an example, let's grab sim simplylondonplumber.com. So let's grab that. Maybe we need some content for our London plumbing website. Our clients just said we need this. This is what they do. So you can grab that. Now, if you go into the Wayback Machine, all you need to do is, so archive.org is the Wayback Machine. So you can look at all different sources of, you know, you can look at, you know, expired images, not expired, but essentially things who are up and now they're gone. So old Instagram, Twitter posts, all that sort of cool things. That's why the Wayback Machine is awesome. But if you're trying to get content specifically from the Wayback Machine, go onto the website of it and just paste your content, uh, paste the URL in there. Now hit browse history. Now what this is going to do is it's going to look back over its book when it's taken snapshots. So when you're trying to grab the content off the Wayback Machine, you want to look for these big blue dots. I think it's green and orange that are like 301s and and uh, 404s and all that. So blue's generally a, a good snapshot. So it's something that's that's been a good snapshot. So what you can do is you can actually go on here and you can look at it and go open up the snapshot and just make sure that you're actually having a look at the website because sometimes this is gonna start, this stuff will happen. So someone's just been keeping the domain live. Uh, we definitely don't wanna look at that page because that's that's got nothing for us. Now you can also come up into the sitemap and the URL page as well. But again, if this screenshot from here isn't really relevant, you're gonna get, it gets a bit messy. I've tried all of this extra stuff. I kinda just like the calendar because the calendar you can come in and have a look and you're looking for these specifically these blue dots. Let me try and zoom in a little bit. So I should actually explain this a lot better for you. So in the Wayback Machine, the way it works is in the calendar, you can see every year, you can see all of these bars, all right? Now, wherever there's more bars, there's more snapshots. So as you can see here in, in 2019, we've come back to see all these blue, uh, these numbers here that are depicted with a circle, blue circle. So you can see that there's all these bars in 2019. So when you're trying to grab the content, you want to just grab on, go onto one of these random ones. And if you see there's a green one down here, which is, it normally says it, yeah, here, green indicates 301 or three a 300 error. So let's just say 301. So someone sent it into their website. So if I see that, I don't want to go forward. I want to go backwards. So let's just go on January 26th and let's see what the snapshot was of this. So... This is the way I do it because I like trying to grab data from this perspective. When I'm trying to get content from the Wayback Machine or any unscrupulous individual is trying to do this and they're trying to get content for lead gen websites and things like that, those naughty boys and girls, this is one way that it can be done. So this is a method that they will, that they will utilize. So as you can see, here we go. Look at this. Bang, here we go. Look at all this content that's just available there. So what can be done 
is a lot of the time they'll grab this content and then they'll come up to a spinner. And now generally they won't copy and paste the content. However, you will find that people will copy and paste the content from expired domains into Google. Do I suggest doing that if you're going to do this? That's real. That's a big footprint you're leaving. So they do get caught and that gets them in a lot of trouble. And again, you shouldn't be doing this, guys. This is not a method for you to do. So one of your competitors might be doing this. You might be sitting there looking at something going, how is this happening? How are they getting this content? But it's saying it's popping up over here, but then over, well, they're getting the content from the Wayback Machine. So now you're going to know how to catch on to this. You're going to know exactly what they're doing. So then they'll normally get that content and just rephrase it in a spinner like Quilba. All right. Put it in any spinner. You can put it in Word, I, uh, Word AI, Chat GPT, whatever, whatever spinner. And it can be spun and then repurposed. So that is a method. Now, you obviously don't want to do that, guys, because down here there should be a copyright. Uh, here we go. That's copyright. So realistically, any content produced. Now, depending upon what country you're in, all the other stuff where you get their uh, content from, is the business names used? It, there's, I'm not an attorney, but depending upon where you are in the world, that content and copyright is very, very important. So you want to make sure that you're not doing anything wrong. You're not doing anything against the law. Make sure that you're always adhering and bringing the best white hat practices possible. Uh, to your SEO campaigns. I would never, ever, if you're ever even thinking of considering doing this, don't. Try not to. It can obviously land you in hot water. Now, let's just say, though, that you bought this domain. What do you do then? Can you get that content? Again, you're going to have to speak with an attorney because you might buy this domain, right? But this plumbing thing simply... Uh, London plumber, you might buy that domain and want to set it up as a lead gen, but that's a real business. That's a real business owner. They might not be comfortable with you utilizing that. And again, you, you'll get in trouble. So you don't necessarily want to do that. So be very careful whenever you're pulling content off the way back machine. But I hope you've enjoyed this walkthrough of how people do pull content and get the content off way back machine and repurpose it for things like lead gen. If you find that interesting and uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like and subscribe and enjoy the shorter uh, informational content. And I'll see you around guys. Cheers.